Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome uh, to another episode of Crime Page by Botany Dozen. Today, uh, I was coming to you from a uh, wonderful, wonderful Elko County, Nevada. You know, maybe I don't know. We're, we're two hours from Idaho, hour and a half from Utah. We're on we're on the Tafacious sediments, the chalky Tafacious sediments, the rolling hills of the powdery shit. All right, we're all gonna get silicosis because we've been doing lines. Okay, we've been doing lines to the ground, especially Jack, as you can see. Ah, hey, look, you got a little uh, got a little snow on your nose, Jack, huh? You have to send you to rehab soon. But we're here because we got a couple interesting plants. Okay, got a, got a lot of interesting shit going on. The Nighthawks kept us up last night, you know, with their series of chirps. And then bellows, the bellows, of course, just being the mechanical sound when they dive, okay? I still see one. They're still up. They've been up all night. They've been up longer than the tweakers here in East, uh, eastern Nevada, okay? You see the little two white bands, one white band on each wing? Maybe we'll see one. I just heard one. He was he was way up there, though. Way up, uh, I don't know where the hell he went. They look like a falcon, but they're not. They're a member of the nightjar family. But very pleasing. It's a kind of pleasing sound to listen to, you know? Much better than, uh, say, a, a generator or the freeway or, or uh, you know, gunshots or anything else you might hear in Western Nevada. Let's start with this grass right here, all right? Kind of getting into grasses a little bit, all right? At least the native ones. Look at this native bunch grass. You can see he's got his dongs out, okay? He's got his balls out right there. See, he's got the stamens. See those little stamens? Three stamens per florit uh, just uh, dangling out of uh, each one of those uh, little florets. Well, not each one of them, but the ones that are going off at least, okay? This is a species of Lamus. Looks like Lamus cinereus, but it's not that, uh, it's not as tall as that. The Great Basin Wild Rye tends to be, but you can still see, look, he's got his dongs out. See that? Because remember, all grasses are wind pollinated. They got very simplified flowers. No petals, no fancy shit. They don't need it. So, look at the, look at the beautiful color in it, too. That mint green, like so many of the plants, so many of the plants here in the Great Basin, where extensional tectonics are ripping the crust apart. And you can go to a number of hot springs and see an old man's scrotum uh, getting into that wonderful, warm, but somewhat nasty water right next to you. Okay, to, you know, to really get into the grasses, you gotta, you really gotta separate them, pull them apart, so that it's not just a cluster. It's not such a clusterfuck to look at, and look at each individual spikelet. Each one of these little branches, branching structures that comes off this main inflorescence is the spikelet. And each spikelet is subtended by, uh, by two glooms at the bottom there. See those two little uh, green bracts? But again, everything's just so smushed together that uh, you really got you know, you to get in there and take them apart. But see, when they're going off, they're not as smushed together. You can see, us, see the dongs coming out. Anyway, this camera, I can't focus. And if all you can see is my nasty thumb, but the, the stigma's in there too. Little three-lobed, almost hairy-looking stigma, which of, of course is the uh, the female part that receives the pollen. So anyway, but you know, you might as well learn the grasses. I mean, they're a huge part of the food chain for Christ's sakes, right? A lot of uh, invasive weedy bullshit that, uh, you know, decreases diversity and is annoying, but there's a lot of really cool ones too. Okay, you could see, look at the soils here. You could see this, uh, you got some cryptogamic crust. There's some algae and, and uh, lichen, well, it's lichen, but it's, uh, you know, algae and, algae and yeast doing their thing together, holding the soil intact on this, uh, what essentially looks like diatomaceous earth, which is, Jesus Christ. How does this stuff grow in it? How do you grow in it? You got just Pharaelsia? It's for us over there. We got Stanlia, all right, but it's not Stanlia panata. It's not Stanlia illata, okay? Cool brassicas, real cool desert brassicas. Look at how deep down the, it's kind of sunk into the goddamn, that's incredible. Almost sunk into this chalky shit. When this stuff gets wet, it turns into this really weird, viscous, uh, like, you know, feels like uh, wet concrete. Got a Stan Lee going off. It looks like someone dumped their garbage there. That's nice. Wouldn't be the American West without a smattering of trash. So here we go. Stan Lee of Arita Flora. One of the cool desert mustards. Real nice desert mustards. Oh, yeah. Get those buds at the top. I haven't opened yet. 
Look at those exerted stamens. Those six exerted stamens. You can see down here you got the uh, fruits already maturing as the flowers have been pollinated. Petals and sepals withering, stamens withering. You got colline leaves, colline leaves, leaves up the top of the stem. Oh, rubbery. Look at the texture of that stem, too. Look at that. Peel this down. See? Kind of almost like it's winged. Almost looks like one of those uh, mints, or those uh, salvias, maybe. It's like salvia divinorum's got that, too. Like the ones the high school kids are always trying to smoke to go into a vortex. Even though it looks like one of the most unpleasant hallucinogenic experiences one could muster on this earth. And right down here, we got a nice uh, onathera. Onathera, excuse me. You could, I mean, you could really pronounce it however you want. People know what you're talking about. That's all that matters. There's those, uh, there's those siliques maturing. We got some moss, too. Look at a moss, mossy moss. Of course, moss has the ability to completely dry out and uh, uh, resume photosynthesis uh, once uh, moisture comes. Look at how this stuff just sinks, just sinks into the ground. Onathera, beautiful onathera. We'll see if we can catch some flowering down away. Now nah, it looks like they're just they're just finishing up. Remember the evening primroses, so they bloom at night. Let's keep going. Okay, so this is not onathera. We didn't get there yet. I just scared them away. But it's the same family. Okay, this is Shilismia. This is Shilismia scopoidea. All right, with uh, heavily reduced flowers compared to those evening primroses. See, this guy's still blooming. Tiny flowers. Okay, but remember, uh, flower parts in multiples of four. Okay, you got eight stamens, you got four petals, you got four sepals, you got an inferior ovary. Right there is the ovary. See those little capsules maturing? The capsules occur beneath the uh, point of connection of those, uh, those uh, petals and sepals. Look at these danglers waiting to go off uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. And look at those, uh, look at those leaves. Such a wonderful texture. What do they look like on the inside? Sometimes you'll see members of this family in the desert and they got little speckling on the leaves. Beautiful, you know, to help them blend in. Okay, add to the camouflage. Okay, there we go. We got one blooming. We got an Onathera blooming. See, that he was going off last night. He's, he, you know, he's going to be done. He's going to be done by, I don't know, 7.30 right now. Probably by 8.15 he'll be done. Maybe another 45 minutes. He's wrapping up. They bloom for one night, one night only. Oh, yeah, get in there. Get in there. You like that? Huh? You like that? Huh? You degenerate? You filthy prick? Look at those, look at those anthers. Those anthers are just about done, too. Just about ready to uh, just totally wither. He's growing in a hole. So what causes the compression? A lot of, a lot of these plants, I've noticed... It growing in these soils, which, you know, just feels like a, a badly mixed, excuse me, batch of cement. Okay, see this, uh, this chalky shit. It kind of, it could stick together a little bit, but then it just turns to powder. Okay? Like it's got no, uh, it's got no adhesive quality once it's dry. But when it's wet, watch out. A lot of these plants will sink into that soil, I've noticed. There's depressions around them. You know, probably caused by the presence of that uh, perennial rhizome uh, in that uh, in its soil, which is also, for me, it's a good indicator that uh, these are perennials. So, you know, the, the above ground tissue dies, but then the root stays alive. So right there, you can see you got a penstemon uh, coming up in the uh, tire track of, uh, of someone's uh, ATV or four-wheeler. Which just shows you, so this didn't happen this year. It just shows you how long it takes these fragile areas, these fragile desert, these fragile desert areas with uh, completely exposed topsoils, barren topsoils, uh, in an area where it doesn't rain, how long it takes them to recover. So some mouth breather comes here, you know, thinking he's getting a taste of freedom. If that's what freedom is, holy shit, lowest common denominator shit. Thinks he's getting a taste of freedom and then, you know, fucks up the area for, uh, you know, the next uh, decade or two, those tracks, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just, I don't know, Wait, whatever, I'm not even going to go there right now. Let's just look at the pretty shit, huh? 
Look, look at all the freedom that happened here, okay? This is what uh, America's all about. This is the liberty, the freedom and the liberty that was able to occur by uh, some halfwit driving through the sagebrush uh, probably two or three years ago. It's amazing. It fills my heart with glee. Anyway, look at this guy. Right here, we got a uh, wonderful Penstemon. Okay, pretty interesting Penstemon. Penstemon in Manifestus. Ah, you can see he's got the orange staminode. See the fuzzy staminode just poking out of that the bilaterally symmetrical flower. The chalky blue leaves. Chalky blue leaves, you prick. And apparently the goddamn rabbits were here. Someone was trying to take a nibble. Apparently Penstemon and Manifestus does not taste that good. Like a lot of desert plants. So that doesn't, uh, it doesn't surprise me. I think this guy, occur maybe he occurs in California too, but you know, one of many species of Pennsylvania. This is a, uh, I think Immanifestus is mostly in Nevada. See, so you could see all of them. There's a bunch right there. There's a little population, a subpopulation. But they grow on this, they grow on this chalky, uh, tufaceous, ashy soil. All the volcanic ash. They seem to really like it. These goddamn evening primroses can be so hard to kill. What is it? Is it just Onathra sage pitosa? What is it? You know, oh, look at a fruit. Look at a capsule right there. That should, that seems like it should be a big giveaway. Look at all the ridges on that guy. Then we got a nice Oreo carrier right here. Member of the Baraginaceae. The Barrage family. Member of uh, the same family as the Phacelia, Cryptantha, etc. Look at those flowers. Look at those, look at those cymes. You see those cymes and those little tiny white, uh, tiny white flowers? Look at the hairs on everything. It's always a good, uh, good giveaway for this family in the deserts as well. And we might as well cover the shrubs here too. We don't want to leave nobody out. Okay, you don't want to leave nobody out. You might give them a complex later on. All right, later on in their life. Uh, like so many of us have, right? Anyway, there you go. Artemisia tried and tied a great basin sagebrush. I like the smell of it. If you don't, you might be an asshole. You might be complaining about shit that doesn't matter. I tend to like it. Can be a little overwhelming. Can give you a headache sometimes, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. What would you rather smell? Artemisia tridentata or some sleazy pricks cologne? Ooh, wait, okay, we'll get back to the shrubs in a minute. Ipomopsis. Ipomopsis congesta. Oh, yeah. See that guy? Flowers are all dried up. Phlox family, polymoniaceae. Look at those leaves. Look at those leaves. So fuzzy. So fuzzy. The Phlox family in the deserts of North America has so many goddamn... Uh, successful, ecologically successful members, annual members, that is, they only grow for one season. Okay, and they're all fuzzy. Almost all of them are, well, not all of them, but a lot of them in the deserts are fuzzy. What's that ant doing? Look at that. See the crypto games? See the lichens and shit growing on the soil? Lichens and mosses. Okay, let's get back to the shrubs. Look at this guy. Gray Espinosa. Look at the Brax. Look at the red Brax. Amaranthaceae. Kinopode subfamily. Not much to look at here. You know, unless he's got those, uh, the Brax on, uh, those, uh, those inflorescences. Well, so what look like Brax, it's actually the seeds. Those are actually the fruits. Remember, quinoa is in the same family. Quinoa is an amaranth. Spinach is an amaranth. Beets are an amaranth. Well, not amaranth genus, but I'm saying amaranth loosely. The genus Amaranthaceae, which Kinopodiaceae, which used to be its own family, has now been merged into. Wonderful color there. You got a nice color palette in keeping with the theme of beige and chalky mint green that you see so much in a Great Basin. In these high, dry deserts. We're high up, too. We're at like 5,300 feet, I think, at least. Look, Louis just, it's not even that hot. Are you hiding behind the shrub? It's not even that bad yet. I was really punishing you guys yesterday. Except sometimes they don't want to drink. I try to feed them. They don't want to, I try to give them water. They don't want to drink. So I just have to pour water on their head, you know, for the cooling. Also helps with the neurotic panting. Look at that. See? It gets wet. And it turns into this 
kind of like a cement, but you poke right, you could poke right through it, poke right through it. I was looking at some with the hand lens last night, and it's uh, just looks like uh, kind of micro crystalline silica. Uh, it looks like we got an astragalus too. Fuzzy beans, fuzzy fuzzy beans. Wonderful leaf shape there, kind of folded in. Okay, kind of can duplicate. Flowers are done, but that don't matter. The fruits are nice to look at too. Fuzzy bean shape. How many seeds you got in there? Would I be a prick if I cracked that open? You could see the flowers were the flowers were blue when they were going off. Rabbit shit everywhere. Apparently the coyotes have not been out here doing their job because uh, the rednecks shoot them. You could shoot coyotes from your porch. I worked with a guy out of Sparks once who said that. He was all excited. He just bought some ranch and you could shoot coyotes from your porch. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's what you spend your time doing. Shooting coyotes from your porch. You just essentially go out and shoot dogs from your porch. Oh, you got quite a few, quite a few, quite a few little uh, beans in there. Quite a few little seeds, not maturing yet. Probably very toxic. Look, there's one of them. Here we go. One of my favorite genera. One of my favorite high-dry desert genera. This is Tetradymia. This is Tetradymia canescens. Tetradymia the genus has about 10 species in it. Depending on what your taxonomy looks like, but they're very successful in the deserts. Okay, the nectar bar is always open on these plants during uh, the growing season. Okay, they flower in masses. You can see very big with the pollinators today, very big with the flies. So this genus uh, goes all the way up into British Columbia, eastern British Columbia. Okay, where it's uh, where it starts to get dry, you know, just before the border with uh, Alberta, goes all the way down into uh northern mexico i think uh even even uh does it go into uh, baja california i think it does northern baja northeastern baja you know and you get a lot of you get a lot of really weird uh variations on the theme here too you get tetradymies that got the uh, you know two inch long spines you know this is a small one too they could get big probably just small because it's somewhat nutrient poor barren exposure right here but they could be you know bushes upwards of five feet tall so this whole genus has been very successful in the deserts of western north america look at us look at the phyleries on there see that one series of phyleries one series of phyleries keeled they got a little ridge to them those bricks those involucre bricks this guy's just been hanging out there what are you doing he's just really taking his time you know Love seeing all these native flies and bees because they're taking such a hit. There's been such a drastic reduction in the number of insects, even at my illegal garden uh, down on uh, Mandela. I don't see that many. They haven't been out. There have been a couple honeybees, a couple bumblebees, but, you know, far reduced from uh, what we had last year. Yeah, another tetradymia right here. See variations on a the theme. Variations on a the theme. Look at that. You got the blue leaves right there. Over here, you got the short green leaves. Tetradymia glabrata. Short fascicled leaves. And again, just, just covered in just covered in flowers. The nectar buffet. See the old country nectar buffet for all those uh, geriatric uh, uh, bees and flies and what the shit. Remember when all the old people used to go to old country buffet? Is that still around? Remember when I was a high school degenerate, I had some friends who used to go there. They'd get just blazed out of their minds and just go lurk in Old Country Buffet for like 12 hours. Look at that. Look at the texture of that soil where it hasn't been, you know, ruined by some mouth breather driving his ATV off trail. You can take your ATV out. You can go four-wheeling. Seems kind of boring to me. But if you want to do that, that, it could be, I could see how it could be fun, okay? But why you got to come off trail and fuck things up? You know, I don't know. I guess because, you know, you, you view there's nothing to do out here besides blow shit up and, uh, and just drive around in circles, which is the way I felt about things when I was like 12. So <laughs> apparently some of us have progressed. I mean, I'm still a jackass. I still got sophomore humor. I'm still kind of a 12 year old at heart, but Jesus Christ, you know, just a little bit. It take doesn't, do you ever reach a little bit more depth? A lot, I think a lot of the American populace doesn't. Anyway, look at the texture of that soil, the rippling, 
those, the top of those mountains held together by the crypto games, the crypto games, the masses, the lichens. It's alive. It can tolerate completely drying out and then just come back and do its thing. Photosynthesize. You got the fungal symbiont on there fucking around. What's the fungus doing? Fungus is always fucking around. Huh? They come back to life. They do their thing. And then, uh, you know, when the situation, uh, when it, the situation uh, has a, a, a decline in quality, they just go dormant again. It's not too bad. Tetradymia before it goes off. Looking all frosty, huh? Like Jack Snow's after he's been doing blow out here. He's been doing lines of the, the silicious uh, ash. The silicious volcanic ash. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Look at that. Townsendia. Apparently named after a dead guy named Townsend who probably was a prick. Unfortunate. It's just the you know way you got it you the way you gotta roll these days. But who cares? You just overlooked it and you just focus on the plant. It's not just a name to me. To me, it's a wonderful genus of about 30 species of high dry daisies, ubiquitous throughout the West. 30 almost 30 species in this goddamn genus. I think you got one or two in Mexico. You got them all over Utah and Wyoming and Colorado. Probably some high high ones in Arizona, okay? Not a, not a low desert plant though. These are always going to be above uh, three or four thousand feet. Look at look at the unopened. Look at the involucre. Look at the phyllaries right there. Before this bastard opens, look at it. God damn, this is. There's some that are like apricot colored. Some that are pink, purple, day glow green. All different color variations. And look at where look at where it's growing. Look at where it's growing. How the fuck do you grow on it? How does it do that? I want to know how they do that. Just like when they break into the garage, okay? You know, when they break into the into your garage in Jefferson Park, they come in through the alley, and, uh, you know, Al Scorch helped me figure this out. They, they get a little guy, they jack the garage up with the uh, hydraulic jack, then they get a little guy to go in there first, Okay. And then he, uh, he he goes to the door, opens the door, and then lets them all in. And then they just clean you out. How does it do that? How does it do that? Townsendia. If you don't know Townsendia, you do now, you prick. You should. That's a fucking, uh, that's, your, that's your gin and tonic right there. Oh, God, I just had a liberty orgasm. Look at all the freedom right here. A lot of freedom happened there. A lot of freedom right there, too. So much. So much freedom. It just came freedom from the sky. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Look at it. Look at the color on this. Look at the color on this penstemon. Penstemon immanifestus. Penstemon immaculatus. It's so immaculate. Huh? Prick. Manifest. What is it manifesting? Is it manifesting positive vibes? If anyone asked me if I was manifesting positive energy, I'd probably kick them in the balls. Or the shins, whichever one, you know, whichever one applied. That is such a, I mean, I've just, I think I've been in California too long, you know, which is funny because it's just, it's not really my flavor. At least you get the Caucasians in California, some of the shit they say, really, I mean, and it really is, it's a, it's a Caucasian California thing. All the astrology and the tarot and the talk about healing and all this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get to, I go a little salty sometimes. I think that's fine. You could talk about the negative stuff. Be honest about it. Don't try to sweep it under the rug. Suburban housewives tried doing that in the 50s and it drove them nuts. Okay, just be honest. And then you transcend it with humor. All right, prick. Anyway, look at the color on this. That's a, that, This thing's still going off. You can see they age the blue, but the, this thing's still going off. The, the wonderful, like, fuchsia pink. It's just, oh, it's, I'm so taken with it. I'm so taken, ooh. There he is. You could see him. He's just he's just calmly waiting. Calmly waiting for an ambush. Huh? He was just laying down. Now his neurotic ass just got to Jack, where are you going? I'm just joking around. Come on. Anyway, so we were talking about freedom orgies earlier. And uh it reminds me I got sent down a wormhole looking at this uh this prepper YouTube channel. It was probably one of the most depressing but also hilarious things I've seen. The guy that ran it, he looked like someone's annoying dad. You know like when you were a kid you go to someone's house and their dad just makes corny jokes and thinks he's being real funny and won't, you know, shut the fuck up and leave you alone. 
this guy kind of looked like that, but he bu he builds bomb shelters for a living, and uh, probably you know probably rolling in dough, you know, with all the especially there's so many paranoid rich people in this country. But I just I love the idea, you know, because it's part of the whole death cult thing. You want the apocalypse to come. You're waiting for the apocalypse to come. You want the nuclear winter, and then you could just you know you think you can just go hide in your hole in the ground for a year or two, you know, while the Lord cleanses the earth of all the sinners, and you get to come back out and it's all yours. Wasn't there a dead Kennedy song written about that? I feel like there was. It's a, it gave me a wonderful microscope into a culture that I'm so thoroughly repulsed by. And and I don't even know if it's a repulsion anymore. I think it's just more of a, a, a sickening feeling. You know, it's just one of those one of those feelings. You realize this stuff exists and you're just like, I okay. I mean, it's a gateway to nihilism maybe is a more appropriate term for it. Because you just realize we are kind of, I don't really feel that way. You know, I, I'm obviously still doing my thing, but I just, you know, you, you want the, <laughs> you want, the, were we just talking about posi vibes, positive energy, manifesting positive energy, huh? During the nuclear winter, it's okay. Don't worry, we can, we could destroy the earth. We'll just go live in a hole in the ground for a year or two. Look, the Halogeton glomerate is really nasty, uh, invasive weed. Remember the amaranthaceae doesn't have any trouble growing on the. Uh, Barren nutrient poor deposits of uh, silicic ash. I'm gonna connect this. Always gotta connect this. Oh look, you could see the scales on those seeds, little star-like scales on the akines to help the seed get around. Just act like a little sail. Take me away. Take it away. Still, still, you know, it's still barely alive. Douglas is connect this. Douglas. Hello, Douglas. It's still so weird. I still, I still, I know I talk shit on all the time, but naming plants after people, really. Douglas died, what, nearly uh, 150 years ago? 200 years ago? Anyway, there you go. There's that Stan Leah. Viridiflora. Virid. Not yet going off. Wonderful color on it, though. Oh, this guy, he's starting to go off right there. He's starting to go off. Desert brassicas, desert mustards. Look at the farina on that. Not a hair to be seen. Not a hair to be seen, but a lot of wax. And again, there's that, that ridged stem. Just growing on the, uh, just growing on the ash. Growing on the ash. Look at this astragalus. You still got the pinnate, uh, the pinnate thing going on, of course. Pinnate leaves, okay? Leaf on the, uh, no, actually, no, you know what? In some of these, you don't. You just got the, you just got leaves of three. And the shorter branches just got leaves of three. There you go, there's a nice pinnate uh, leaf. See one leaf on either, uh, either side of that rachis. Look at the, uh, look at this, look at the fruits on these. Little pink fuzzy beans, more elongated, not as swollen as, as uh, the one I just showed you over there. How many? How much diversity in a stragglers? There's like something like uh, 3,000 species. Ubiquitous genus in uh, dry areas, not just in North America. So anyway, the question you may be asking is what's up with this soil? How does it, uh, at least I hope you're asking, otherwise you haven't been paying attention to this goddamn shit. You gotta be asking the right questions, making observations, wondering what the shit's going on. How did these mounds get here? Why are they so white and chalky and ashy as hell? Look, they're so goddamn ashy. Looks like I'm wearing fucking golf shoes now. Look at that. It turned my shoes white. You know, I ditched the Red Wings for a minute. I look like an old man. These white shoes, you know? <laughs> like these white clunky golf shoes. Should be wearing some beige shorts and a little uh one of those corny hats take a walk and elko get my ass kicked anyway uh actually i'm just joking elko's not really like that elko's full of like uh 25 year old kids that just got rich working for the mines now they own these jacked up pickup trucks i remember when i was here I spent a lot of time here because that's where i learned to run a part of where i learned to run freight trains and i remember my my the poster child experience of Elko for me was walking down the main street and seeing a pregnant lady 
pushing a stroller and some 25 year old uh, neck beard mouth breather just drives by her in a giant black truck and just belches black smoke. It all goes right in the stroller, right over the woman. It was just, I mean, it was so, I mean, I laughed, I'll be honest with you. It was like so hilariously dark. Comedy and tragedy always go together. You know, what are you gonna do? Just the way it works. That was that was the poster child experience for Elko for me. Cause they got the gold mines here, you know where they do the cyanide heat bleaching. So uh anyway, you know, all these all these young kids are hood rich. Anyway, so you might be asking, you might be asking, you know, how does this get here? I always think about that too. How do these formations form? Okay, it's volcanic ash. Look at pictures of Mount St. Helens. This is the same shit that was falling on everybody's car, you know, for a few days after. You know, nine inches of ash accumulation. Really terrible. Terrible for the plumbing. Terrible for the gut, the gutters. Terrible for the uh, for the filters, the air filters on your car. Just the uh, tiny silica particles. But how does it end up here? I think this uh, age has been dated at uh, Miocene, maybe mid Miocene, 19, 15 million years. 15 million years. So this is an ash flow. It's been weathered, apparently, a few million years of weathering. Maybe it was compacted at one point, then it was later weathered. Maybe it was welded together at one point in like a welded tuff. And then later, uh, maybe it, uh, you know, just took some time to weather, grind down, turn the sediment again. You know, is it a sedimentary rock? Is it uh, volcanic? Is it, it's a sedimentary rock composed of volcanics. Well, it's not really a rock now. In some places it, it is. You can see where it lithifies, like right here. But then again, you could just pull that off. And... But think about the qualities that make this rock uh, hard for plants to grow on. Very nutrient poor. Or this rock, so whatever the shit you want to call this. Tophaceous sediments, tophaceous shales. Oh, what's that? That's more of a penstemon. What is this over there? Is that just Onathra? I think that's just on I think that's I think it's just the Onathra. God, I've really gotten a mouthful of this silica. So you know, use your imagination. Think about what happened here. It's you know, it could be hard to recreate, but that's really you gotta get crafty with geology. You gotta use your imagination. You gotta think about the events that transpired. You gotta think about long timelines, okay, that dwarf your own meager human existence. That's why I like it so much. Think about what occurred here over the last however many millions of years. Think of this stuff, did it fall gently? Was it a pyroclastic flow? Was it welded together at one point and then later weathered and eroded? What happened? I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't, haven't really looked for, you can't really find too much on this ex particular exposure online, but they're just looking at it, you know, you know, at least I do. It's tophaceous. Get the hand lens out. You can see the little, uh, Silica particles in there, but it sure does create an interesting. What's this sandstone? Is this sandstone or no? It looks like a looks like some kind of agate. I can't even see. It's so bright that I got the fucking the whole camera's coated in dust. I can't even see. Coated in the dust. More of that moss. But anyway, so you can also think of the hazards this stuff is going to put on plants, okay? Barren exposures, not much nutrients. You know, the, the mechanical properties of it, what it's going to be like to grow in it, what it does when it's wet versus when it's dry. Almost forms like a, I want to, maybe it's a clay. Kind of sticks together a little bit. But it's obviously presenting some obstacles to plant growth because it's so barren. And then, of course, whatever is able to make it here. So this, this acts as a selective pressure. This soil acts as a selective pressure on plants. Okay, weeds out the ones that can't make it. Gives an opportunity to the ones that can. And uh, then you get that, that's how you end up eventually getting speciation. One of the ways you could get speciation, rather. I wanna, you know, get you guys thinking of wrong shit. Oh, we got some gravels up here. What's going on here? Yeah, there we go. See that? Look at that. More silica. Huh? See that? Agate. Could it be a little quartz piece that was embedded in a larger rock that's since eroded? 
was just maybe deposited. Looks a little rounded, maybe deposited in a stream, but it's not it's not heavily rounded. They're not looking like cobbles. You got a little bit of uh, rounding there though. So maybe there could be some water action, some nice water action. Ooh, hot. You know, all the rocks hanging out in the hot tub together. You know, let your imagination run wild. But it does create a nice landscape. And I see shit like this from the satellite, and I know there's probably going to be good plants there. Interesting plants like Stanleya, Stanley, Veritiflora. Look big today. The ants are going in there. What are the ants doing in there? Huh? Why are you getting in there? You don't need to do that. Look at the shit flying around. Imagine such a barren area. This is a very important, uh, very important plant. Well, you got the tetradymia too. Mix up your uh, your nectar palette with some tetradymia uh, nectar. You can get a little stanlia when you're done. Maybe some penstemon if they're still going off. Certainly onothra if you're a moth here at night. Rubbery. Why don't the brassicas associate with the uh, mycorrhizae? Why? They got to associate, a couple of them got to associate with some glomeromycetes at least. You know the glomeromycetes, don't you? Do you know your fungal uh, clads? You should. What a dick. You know what it does. You know what you can eat. You should know the ecology too and the evolution. Huh? Ascomycetes, Presidiomycetes, Zygomycetes. Got your glomeromycetes. Look that shit up. Do it right now. Look, these are about to open. These are about to go off. See, see the gravels? See the gravels? Deposited, you know, 30,000 years ago, 300,000 years ago in an ancient stream. What did it? Yeah, it's really, you know, it's fucking me up with this. Uh, everything's so bright. It's like filming in snow. You know, really, really messes with the exposure. Look at it. I want you to realize how weird it is. You got those six stamens, which are poking out, right? Which are poking outwards. These guys. See, those, those are the stamens. And then inside that are the four petals. And you got those four tepals pulling back. See that? You really got to look up. I mean, don't you have questions? You look at flowers, you wonder what the shit's going on. And look at the anthers. Look at the anthers on these uh, these old flowers. They do that little curly cute thing. See, they curl back. When when, I, when else are you going to get a chance to look up close at the uh, genitals of uh, Stanlea veritiflora? But yeah, look, the uh, the petals curl the petals are like the inner part of the perianth. I mean, there's still the outer layer right here, but they're they're on the inside of that flower. It's like, what's the what's the point of them? Are they acting as attractants? Are they just making sure the the pollinators, you know, have to move around? They can't go right for the juice in the center of that flower. They have to move around and come in contact with the anthers right there, like this guy's doing right there. Very odd, the brassicas. Sometimes those petals will fool you. They'll look like stamens. They'll look like stamens. You got to get close up. Okay, Streptanthus and Colanthus do that too. God, what a cool plant. Take it in context. Look at it alone. Maybe it's a little boring. Take it in context. It becomes something else entirely. All right? Fascinating as hell. Very interesting. And to think that it's growing in this barren-ass soil without the help of... Uh, a fungal symbiont to help it obtain nutrients. You know, when I looked at the bigger picture with a lot of the mustards, I really, uh, that's when I started to get a little enthralled, you know? There's a guy that studies them at uh, Missouri Botanical Garden, but he wouldn't have anything to do with me. Actually, I don't think he would have anything to do with anybody. He's uh, he's kind of old and, you know, just didn't, doesn't, uh, you know, he's got his own thing going on. I think he's, that's how I'm going to be when I'm old too. I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm done. I'll check out, you know, I'm just kind of like, he's got his own shit going on. But God, the, the wealth of knowledge in that guy's head. Need somebody else to get out and study the mustards. Could probably teach us a lot. Wonder what genes are responsible for how uh, well they do in, in deserts. Because there's so many of them. There's so many. Of them. What a fucking cool family. Brass the case, everybody. You prick. There you go. Stan Leah, Verita, Florida. This is the last I'll show of it, okay? Last I'll show. Promise.
Surprised I haven't seen this guy yet. Fizeria. Look at it, the bladder pods. Nice little rosette. You know, too bad. Oh, wait, he's got some fruits. Does he got some fruits in there? He got some fruits. No flowers, though, I can't show you. Nice little rosette. Ooh, scabbard. Those leaves are scabbard. What's the texture of those like? Why is it like that? It's got a bunch of scales on there. Another interesting desert brassica. Another interesting desert mustard. You might see this around if you live in a, you live in a Great Basin. Okay, especially a lot of these in Utah. A lot of these in Utah, Colorado. There's a lot of species of Fizarias. This is a nice little rosette forming one. Oh, that's, 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 a, that's a charmer right there. Well, after a couple long rants and a couple nice money shots, I think we're just about done here. You know, I, I just woke up. I haven't even had a coffee yet today. I just had a uh, energy drink. Kind of tasted like a urinal mint. I need at least 12 ounces. But you see the barren soils. You see the barren soils and you know there's going to be some good stuff there. All right, there usually is. It's where plants get a chance to uh, really test what they got. Or a lineage, not individual plants, rather. I should say a lineage gets a good chance to test what it's got. Test what its allelic capabilities are. I just made that up. Is that even a word? Possibly. See what those uh, genes and variations on a gene can do. Get a chance for evolution to work its magic. Look for the barren areas in the desert environments. Or barren areas, rocky outcrops in uh, heavily forested areas. They've been there for a while, you'll find some good stuff. How long does it take a plant to speciate? 10,000 years? 500,000 years? A few million? Where do you get the greatest, uh, the greatest uh, variation, the greatest amount of change? All these questions you should be asking yourself. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching. I mean, that's, I mean that seriously. I'm not being a smartass. Thank you. Literally, thank you for watching. Prick. That's all I got for you today. Have a rest of your, uh, have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.